The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know I am determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. Joining me today are two guests with a very interesting mission and a very pure heart. And I'm so excited to bring this topic to you. I have a feeling I'm going to learn a lot as well. Joining me are complete humans, Jana Bres- Breslin and Evan DeMarco, bringing a unique and fresh perspective to the problems we face as a species and what we can do as individuals and as a collective, I love that, to optimize the world and ourselves. Jana and Evan share articles and authentic conversations about wellness, longevity, personal growth, and bio-optimization, along with inspiring stories that encourage community and social responsibility. I can't wait to learn more about Complete Human. Welcome to the show, Jana and Evan. I have been practicing as a physician, as both of you probably know, and have wellness practices, integrated medical practices, but it continues to not be my only mission. I feel like we can't talk wellness and have it like kind of boxed away in this pretty little space for just a couple of people. And there really is a bigger conversation that goes to our soil and our air and our water and how we treat one another and so much more. So when I was reading this today, I was like, I want to know what they're doing. I wonder if they're on the same bandwidth. So talk to us, what's going on? How did you two guys get together? What is a complete human? or the complete human, and we'll go from there. <laughs> well, well, I love that you said that we are complete humans. I wish we could say that, but that is, <laughs> we, are, we are far from that, but it's always a journey and that's what we promote. Yeah, um, and so, you know, really the origins of us kind of came about um, after a trip to Costa Rica uh, with Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese, where we got to experience their XPT training platform, which was ice baths and then saunas and all of this stuff that was, fun, but taxing and, you know, really kind of looking at that. And and we met there and we just really had this idea that there was so much more of a story to tell. And then about a month later, we decided to backpack through Peru for 10 days, uh, you know, do an ayahuasca journey. And really there kind of outside of the, you know, the, the hustle and bustle of U.S. life, we really decided that the foundations of our journey moving forward had to be about how do two people who are so immersed in health and wellness really start to take that message beyond what happens once, you know, our numbers look good and we mm-hmm. feel good and we look good and do something that exists so far beyond us. And, and I think that that's really always been the failure of the health and wellness industry is that we heal the person, but then what does that person do to go on and heal other people or heal the planet? And, and so, you know, with all of these individuals who might be individually okay, we still collectively have so many problems that we need to tackle. Um, and so really the origins, uh, you know, evolved from that. We started telling stories. We started traveling the world. We started, you know, really looking at what are the fundamental problems that we face as a species? And we can't fix those if we're not well, but how do we take people, uh, you know, who aren't well, put them through a journey that allows them to embrace their own health and wellness, to get on that path and then go do something with it. Get passionate about mm-hmm. something, you know, whether it's saving the oceans or saving the manatees or, you know, e- eating organically or, or, or really getting back to the, you know, the idea that we have to change the way that we live if we're going to survive the next hundred years. And, and so it's, you know, it, it really became this evolution and this platform of, hey, how do we interview the best minds in the world? How do we kind of take all of the stuff that's out there and put it together in a platform that allows people to just follow this journey towards being a complete human, knowing full well that uh, that never happens, right? We all have good days, we all have bad days. But if we're on that journey together, then at least we're aspiring towards something other than what'd you watch on Netflix tonight? Right. Why do you think that happens? Do you think the entry point into that consciousness has to be a crisis? Does it have to be a health crisis, a relationship crisis? Like what's what's happening and how do we, how do we get here essentially is what I'm asking. Because here's my challenge is, People walk through my doors and usually their motivation is not like, hey, teach me how to heal the planet, right? Their motivation is more like, I'm just tired and I don't, I can get out of bed or, you know, I have pain or, you know, I can't take care of this person or that person. Like they have these very tangible individual motivations. Like what does it take to wake everyone up, right? Even when they think they're feeling okay, to this whole concept of connectivity and, and how it's, how we all kind of have a little bit of a responsibility. I mean, I, I feel like it usually takes a big catalyst for a lot of people to make the initial change, but 
I don't think at this point that we have to go through something traumatic or something massive to make a change in our life or make a change in the plan. And I think that's what Evan and I are trying to do is inspire people to take action now. I mean, we are, we as a species and our planet, we're in trouble. We need help. Like things are not going how it should be. And so our motivation comes from, you know, regardless if you've been through something that is a catalyst for growth, regardless of what that is, now is the time. I yeah. Like and, and sadly, we are in that spot where if we don't make the change, like as a planet, we're sick. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just, are we at that point where we're willing to go into the doctor and say, I need help? Or are we going to wait till the cancer has grown so big and, and so vast that there's no hope of fixing it? And, and I think that sadly, yeah, it, it doc, it, it kind of does usually take a negative thing to get most people to, you know, to change their, their behavior. Attention. And I, I, I mean, look at COVID. How many people are just like, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Normal is not good. Right. Like, maybe right. this is the wake up call to change. Right. And that's what I've been saying. This is like a change everything, change medicine, change how we run our lives, change so many different things. I, I, that has struck me as well, where everyone's like, we just need a vaccine and we're done. You know, and I'm like, not exactly. We're not ever done, you know, but, you know, let's paint that picture for people watching or listening today. Why is they may push back. I'm in Georgia. Some people don't think climate change is real, not to knock my state, but I'm just, I'm just painting, you know, the picture here, but explain why you think the planet's in trouble. Break it down for us. What, what, what's the story there? You know, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger said it best, and this is the best way to actually get the climate naysayers to just, you know, pull their head out of your know what is there's a 10 by 10 room. There's two 10 by 10 rooms. One is running an electric powered vehicle and one is running a gas powered vehicle. I have to lock you in one of those rooms for two hours. Which one are you going to choose? And here's, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, a registered Republican, Republican governor of California. But even he recognizes that like no intelligent person is going to go lock themselves in a room with a gas powered vehicle for two hours because they know they're going to die. So when we start to extrapolate all of that, And we recognize even just from the thought experiment of all the cars on the road, all the planes, all that, yes, we've done some serious things. Now let's take a look at the hardcore science. Let's take a look at the global warming. Let's take a look at the polar ice caps melting, the amount of fresh water that's being dumped into the seas that could ultimately impact the North Atlantic current. There goes our entire temper, you know, uh, there goes the entire temperature for the Northern hemisphere, right? Now Mm -hmm. we're in another ice age, which then forces people South and that, you know, they're going to end up in more humid um, tropical climates where now we've got major rampant disease because of all the mosquito issues, the Zika, the malaria, like we don't recognize that we are that frog that's been sitting in that warm water, slowly being turned up to boiling. If we, if you were a human being and you were, intelligent and you came to planet earth today and you looked around and be like, holy cow, this is a problem, but people don't want to admit that. And so there's every discernible scientific, you know, body of evidence that suggests we have, we have moved past that point, you know, uh, the parts per million in the air, the amount of plastics in the ocean, you know, the amount of plastics in the fish that we're eating from the ocean. Right. Um, Japan has Geiger counters at some of their fishing ports to deal with fish that have been overradiated from Fukushima. And so they have to get rid of those fish when they bring them back in for commercial sale and consumption to the general public. Like if you eat a toxic radiated fish, you know, every day for the rest of your life, how long are you going to live? Right. Such a problem. Where do we start? You know, does the complete the program, the complete human, the platform, does that help us with a starting point, a beginning point as we dive into this conversation and move forward? How do you envision like what's sort of the framework you've created? Because I, I, I get overwhelmed, too. Right. Like I I'm like, well, where do I put my energy? I'm already doing this, this and this. Like, how do I become a part of this conversation? How do I become a part of change? How do I contribute in a way that's positive and can help the planet? Where do people start? Yeah, I think, you know, what what Evan and I like to do is highlight topics and highlight things that are very real and going on in the world. We we also interview people that are very knowledgeable on what's happening there. So we love to use our platform as a resource hub for people to go to get educated, to figure out what's going on in the world. How can they make a change? I mean, it's, I think it all comes down to education first and Mm -hmm. it's what we're trying to do is use our platform to really hammer home that message that the change, it starts now and it starts with every one of us. It's not 
if or when it's now. Well, I, I think the other thing too is let's one of my favorite and least favorite times of the year outside of COVID is going to the gym on like January 2nd mm-hmm. and it's packed, right? Because you've got right. all of these people right. wanting to do their new year's resolutions. Right. And it's fun to see in our line of work because we recognize that people are taking a proactive approach to their health. Right. But, and it's not fun because you can't get on a machine and it's just too busy, but by February, March, Over. the gym is yeah. back to normal. Yeah. So what are the mental blocks that keep people from staying on that journey? So what we've kind of created are these four principles, right? It starts with mental fortitude. How do we address the mental issues that keep people from really embracing their true health? Put down the bag of potato chips. And guess what? They might be whole food potato chips, but they're still potato chips, right? Um, How do you deal with the mental blocks? And part of that is education. Part of that's motivation. And part of that's using diagnostic testing to say you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so then once we take that mental fortitude, we can apply that to physical health. And physical health is you don't have to follow what we do. We don't have to follow what you do. It's do something, get movement every day get a good diet, get some good supplementation, supplementation based off of your unique, you know, microbiome, your unique system. Mm -hmm. Then you take that into social and the social part is the most important part, right? Because I think when we, when we go into a social setting with our group of people, our peers, our tribe, if we want to say that, and we ask them to hold us accountable for our goals, those physical goals, well, then we're, we're more likely to accomplish them. But if we align ourselves with people that we've, you know, that have the same goals and visions, well, what happens? You've got mentally strong people who are physically physically well in a group of people. What can that group of people do? They can change the world. And so that leads to this planetary connection, right? You need mentally strong, physically fit, communal-based people to say, we're going to go out and tackle global warming. We're going to get rid of plastics in the ocean. We're going to deal with organic farming. We're going to make sure Monsanto doesn't have a say in our food supply. Right. Um, you know, so, so it, that's what it takes, right? It, it's a process, but it's kind of also a circle in the sense that we just need those steps in place before we can enact real change. I love that. I love how you break it down into four very clear sort of buckets or categories, so to speak. I think that's so brilliant. I, you mentioned diagnostic testing. Is that diagnostic testing for the mental component of it, the emotional component of it, or what, was it more for the physical kind of... It, it Stop. really represents both, right? Yeah. Um, you know, let's let's just say that you know it's a thyroid issue, right? Well, n- why right. why don't you have the energy to get you know to go to the gym? Well, you know, so different. so a lot of the things that we can address both mentally and physically come from diagnostic testing. Plus, yeah. there is no knowledge that is not power. So right. if I look at my microbiome, if I look at my DNA methylation, if I've got comprehensive blood work, and I can start to craft a very specific plan for myself that deals with all of the issues that I have then it becomes easier. And then, you know, the thing that we always say is test, optimize, retest, right? Because those, those small motivations come from seeing the progress. And I I was like fish oil is a perfect example. And having spent Mm -hmm. a lot of time in that fish oil or omega threes are fantastic. If, you know, if they're manufactured properly, but you don't know that they're working, right? If I've got joint pain, I don't wake up in the morning and say, I want an omega, I need an Advil. And so the whole concept of diagnostic testing gives us that feedback loop that says we're doing something right. And in that comes the motivation to continue to do it. So it really bridges that gap between mental fortitude and physical health. And I'm, you know, such a firm believer in that. And so many people come to me and they haven't had numbers checked. They haven't had inflammation markers checked, hormone numbers checked, nutrient markers checked. And so they think they're quote unquote healthy, right? Or fine. And part of my sort of stand on COVID too has been America's sick. I'm not surprised the numbers are where they are. I'm not surprised the hospitalizations are where they are. Why are you guys all acting so surprised? Because the majority of the population is walking around either overweight, highly inflamed or highly nutrient depleted or just very stressed, right? You're dealing with all of that stuff, which then wears down the immune system. So I think this is such an important idea to get out there that these things are connected, that our health is connected to the health of the planet. And then your platform sounds like a great way for people to start to learn and to educate themselves about it. You guys developed a supplement line as well. Is that sort of in tandem with the complete human platform too? Yeah. um, The supplement line really kind of came out of all, both of our experience and I've developed, you know, probably 1500 supplements for different brands, you know, over the years. Yeah. Um, And I know that Jan has been such an advocate of that. I don't want to speak for you, but you know, it's like, how do we take the fact that we kind of own the manufacturing plant and extrapolate supplements that are really 
essential for the modern American, the modern human, um, without having to come at such a high cost. And there's so much embedded margin. There's so much embedded cost in dietary supplements that doesn't need to be there. So we wanted to really solve that problem as well as get nutrients into people, the right nutrients based off of diagnostic testing at a price point that's viable, that makes it so that, you know, that doesn't become the first thing to go um, in a cash crunch, which right now in COVID, a lot of people are suffering economically. Right. Wow. Health should be affordable. Mm -hmm. Health should be affordable. Wellness should be affordable. These concepts should be global. I think that's something that certainly drives me and I'm constantly trying to innovate what we do and, and figure it out. It can be challenging because the powers that be seem you know, more oppressive or more overwhelming than what some of us feel like we're able to do. But, you know, again, collective community coming together. I think, you know, there's power in numbers and even our entire wellness, holistic health, integrative community has been driven by, by people, right? They want that. They want this information. They're desperate for it. So hopefully that, that whole uh, train will continue for sure. Is there anything else you would want someone to really know about the complete human program or someone who's listening and thinks they're fine? What, what would you tell them to do to begin with? I mean, we always highlight diagnostic testing just to try that first, but, um, also on our website, we did, um, we did write a book on epigenetics that we are really proud of. So that's a free download on our website. If people are interested in kind of learning more about DNA and epigenetics and how that works and how you are not the, your family history, you can move yes, past that. And, you. um, you know, I think it just starts with knowing what you're starting with, you know, what are you, what is your baseline? So then you know how to optimize moving forward. And we talk about that that's all so, the time. So that's incredible information too, because so many people just assume that, you know, their story is already written, which is far from the, far from the truth. Yes. You were about to say something, go ahead. Yeah. And I think beyond that, one of the things, you know, the, the platform for complete human is educate and inspire. And, and I think that there's this underlying belief that this whole process, the, the changing of the changing, the trajectory of humanity has to be painful. And the reality is it doesn't. So part of the inspiration is we can have a lot of fun along the way. Mm -hmm. We did one of our first episodes was with surf fin uh, or smart fin, which is a temp temperature salinity differential sensor at the bottom of a surfboard. So now surfers all across the world are able to take uh, temperature readings in the ocean and send those back to the Scripps Institute. Mm -hmm. So like, how do we as community have fun changing the world? And that's, uh, that's part of the community, right? So we, we have to recognize that this doesn't all have to be work, that part of the joy in becoming a complete human or the journey of that is having fun. So how do we inspire people to get passionate about something and then go out and make a difference? Absolutely. And speaking of making a difference, you, I think Evan wrote a children's book. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, real quick. Um, so I, I'm a single parent. And when my daughter was four years old, uh, she had a monster that showed up in her closet. Now, any parent who's ever gone through the monster in the closet knows logic simply cannot fix the problem. <laughs> you open the closet door, you turn on the light, show them that there's just toys and clothes there. No big deal. The second you close the door, the monster comes back. So um, basically one night I, I took her downstairs, I took some food coloring, some excipients and a bottle of lavender oil. And I, we had a, I had her mix that up and then I cut like a little piece of her hair off, put it in the bottle. And then we went up and sprayed it around her room. And I told her this was her magic monster spray. Mm. And I wrote a book about it just as something that I wanted to share with her. And then um, about a year ago, I, I, I was introduced to Operation Underground Railroad, which is a nonprofit organization that, uh, employs ex-CIA, special forces, and these guys physically go in and remove kids from sex trafficking rings. Mm -hmm. And then they begin the process of rehabilitation. So I think as a parent, and I think as a human being, I recognize that we have so many problems in this world, you know, the climate, our health, all of these things. But this is the one problem that I think I keep coming back to that if we can't ensure that, that every single child is safe. If we can't ensure that our children have a safe place to be where sex trafficking doesn't exist, I don't even think we deserve to inherit this planet. I, I think that this is the fundamental problem of, of, our, of our lives. And so I'm committed with Operation Underground Railroad to ending sex trafficking period. Um, so I wrote this book, 100% uh, of the proceeds uh, go to Operation Underground Rail Railroad. It's available on Amazon, Mia and the Go Away Monster Spray. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to raise $2 million with this book. I've committed wow. a, a big chunk out of my own pocket just to make yeah. sure that we get there. And you know, I, I want to make sure that I can tell my daughter that this is in her lifetime a, a problem that we solved. 
I don't know where this problem came from. It seems like it's just an, just an epidemic. It seems like a really big epidemic. We're in Atlanta and it's a huge issue here as well. So thank you for putting time and energy and dollars behind it. It's a, it is a major, major problem. My daughter actually just finished a service project where they were going to shop for some of these kids that have been rescued from homes where they were sex trafficked and they're now in safe houses, but um, you know, they, they don't have stuff. So they're going to spend their Christmas working with them to get them kind of what they need. So I think all of these things are, are ways we can make a difference on in the planet for sure. This has been, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it's a, it's a ripple effect, right? And this yeah. is one of those things, you know, you know, buying a blanket, sending a toy, you know, finding a charity that works with these kids because just getting them out of the ring is, is the beginning. That's only the beginning. Then there's the emotional rehab, the physical rehab, all the things that go into this. We can't even begin to imagine what these kids go through. And so every little show of support, there's a ripple effect. And, and I, I really do believe that if we can change this, this is, this is something that changes the trajectory of, of the human species. This is that fight that if we can win this, we know that we can beat anything. Ah, beautifully said. Well, if anyone watching today wants to connect with you guys, join the Complete Human, learn more, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, completehuman.com, probably the best. We're on social as well. And um, we also have our own podcast, Complete Human Podcast, and everything can be found on completehuman.com. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you both for taking time out today to join me and talk about thank your you. amazing mission. And I'm in, I'm all in. I, this is wow. something I firmly, I firmly believe in. And in fact, I've watched and just, there's a bigger picture to this whole story. And I think we all need to be a part of it. So I think it's amazing. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you and for, for helping everyone. us fight the good fight. Yes, definitely. We'll have to join forces for sure. <laughs> uh, and for everyone else watching, thank you for joining this episode of Superwoman Wellness. Remember that we are on Spotify as well, so you can rate and review it and share it with your friends. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.